Do my eyes deceive me? I'm seeing a spell of good fortune for IBM stock? Folks, I didn't think this was possible. We're talking about IBM earnings today, and I'm in disbelief. The stock has gone up. Oh my goodness. In fact, the stock's up on, on a whole week. Isn't that wild, folks? It's hard to believe, knowing the history of IBM stock. Been getting shammered at all times. We're seeing a 1.4% rise in the after-hours trading after reporting earnings. We're going to take a look at those earnings, see what's going on, see how we feel about the stock at these levels, okay? <clears throat> Let's put into preface first. This is the stock over the last year, technically, is still down now. Still down. Um, it's going to be down uh, a little bit under 1% now, so nothing really crazy, but not much movement in the last year. I mean, less than 1%. And in the last five years, oh my gosh, a 15.69% downward movement in five years. That's garbage. IBM, it's been straight up dead money. Absolutely dead money um, in the past five years. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at these earnings, see why we're rising, though. Worth talking about. <clears throat> Quarter one non GAP EBS here. Beats by a cent here. They posted a dollar forty line. Non GAP is not necessarily my focus. If you know me, I love. The gap EPS. I want to see the actual net income line, which we will see. Uh, don't know why Seeking Alpha doesn't always include it on there. They're lazy sometimes. The revenue line came in at 14.2 billion, up seven, 7.7 percent year over year. Beat by 360 million. Is this IBM I'm talking about? It's very rare to see these large of year over year increases from IBM. In a beat like that, IBM doesn't do it, folks. So we're pretty excited to see that. Uh, if you look at the software line, up 12%. Um, software is up 12%. Uh, consulting revenue up 13%. And uh, infrastructure revenue was down uh, 2%. So worth mentioning all of those items. As far as guidance, they're expecting constant currency revenue growth at the high end of the mid-single digit range, which obviously right now, this quarter was at the high end of the mid mid single digit range. They're expecting an additional 3.5 contribution uh, from incremental sales uh, to Kindrel, which is their um, they're spinning off um, with Kindrel there. So obviously that's going to uh, benefit them. They're saying so at mid uh, mid April 2022, uh, foreign exchange rates uh, currency expected to be. About a three to four point headwind. Good for them. Good for them. And for free cash flow, they were uh, expecting ten billion to ten point five billion in consolidated free cash flow for the next quarter as well. Um, <clears throat> guidance, nothing crazy about guidance. I mean, there really isn't anything wild there. Um, so that's a good thing, right? No, nothing really to report on that. We're gonna get into the press release now and, and talk about that. Um, here, obviously, words uh, from none other than. Uh, Arvin Krishna. That's right. That's how you say it, folks. Um, demand for the hybrid cloud and AI uh, hybrid cloud and AI drove in both software and consulting in the first quarter. Uh, more focused. Uh, we're a more focused business, and our results reflect the execution of our strategy. Which I, I mean, I do agree in that aspect. They have been working on kind of revamping this company and getting it back a little bit closer towards its former glory. Because um, it's fallen quite a bit since then, right? And you can see that in the share price as well. Um, <clears throat> off to the solid start of the year, um, they're expecting the growth for the full year to be at the high end of their model, which is exciting too. That's why you see stock uh, stock go up, move price up. Um, but yeah, first quarter highlights here. Obviously, we saw that um, uh, over five points uh, from the incremental sale to Kindrel software. Uh, up 12 as we saw. We saw this from the hybrid cloud standpoint. They put up a $5 billion line, which is up 14%. Really nice to see that. And over the last 12 months, it's showing a 17% growth um, with $20.8 billion. So that's really nice. We're talking about double digit growth in those segments. Um, this infrastructure revenue, not exciting, but uh, not terrible. What else do we see here? Um, <clears throat> so, gap from continuing operations. We love gap income. Uh, from continuing operations, this is the line we're looking at: 0.7 billion. Now that 
is up 64% year over year, but it's a pretty small line, all things considered. I mean, you'd like to see a little bit more based off of a 14.2% four, uh, growth, or $14.2 billion line of revenue, to only see $0.7 billion or $700 million in net income. I, I don't love it all that much, especially with a pre-tax. Uh, this pre-tax margin, pretty, uh, pretty light, all things considered. But 64% uh, growth, we'll take it. We'll take it, okay? Um, as far as the segments were concerned, hybrid is really one of the main things I'd like to focus on there. Um, <clears throat> we saw Red Hat revenue up, automation up uh, 3% data and AI up 2 and security. Most of this Red Hat line is pretty exciting. Um, transaction processing was up 26%. Um, and software segment hybrid cloud was up 22% as well. Nice to see. The consulting, also really nice here, um, accounted for. Uh, 4.8 billion dollars of that uh, the revenue makeup um, business transformation up 15 technology consulting and application up. I mean this is great stuff um, double digits in every really facet of the consulting segment but the infrastructure where you get a little bit uh, questionable here down 2.3 percent uh, hybrid infrastructure down 5 percent um, IBM Z systems was down 19 so uh, from an infrastructure standpoint, look, this this is not uh, not what you're looking at for this company, right? I'm a lot more interested in the software segment, especially when you talk about the hybrid platform. Um, and this Red Hat line is exciting, too, um, if you're interested in that. So that definitely is something I, I look for as well. Financing, obviously not a major segment of the business, only $200 million, down 26%. Not a segment of the business really worth talking about. We'll look at the fa the balance sheet as well. Uh, for sure, we're going to take a look at that balance sheet right now. How about that? Actually, I saw a thing that maybe I like. No, I don't. Um, let's look at this balance sheet. Let's get into it and talk about it. Total current assets right now. Um, it's at only a, a three month comparison, so just quarter over quarter, but I can talk about it still. Uh, current assets sit at 31.3 compared to 29.5. Um, actually, a big increase in this cash position, cash position, and you see that because of the sale to Kindrel. I believe that's entirely what that looks like. Uh, I believe that's where this cash is coming from, that extra sale that they made. Uh, and total assets kind of reflects. Just really that current asset line at 133.2 compared to 132. A lot of assets for this company, really a lot of assets. So that's a good thing for them. Total current liabilities at 34 compared to 33.6. Rose slightly, not as much as the current assets. And total liabilities in general at 114.1 compared to 113. So all things considered, um, we did she, she a shareholder equity increase by only around 100 million, 19.1 compared to 18.9. There is a lot of long-term debt on this company, as you can see. 46.5 billion uh, did rise as well. So shareholder equity is okay, but they could do a lot more. Obviously, um, I look at the stock now, and <clears throat> again, it's trading in a PE ratio around 25. Market cap at 116 billion, not bad, all things considered, because you're talking about a price to sales right around two, um, and a dividend yield around five percent. Still, I still like IBM. Uh, mostly as a dividend play, but I think there's, I think this company's still around fair value, so I'll enjoy a 5% gain annually with this dividend yield, in my opinion. And obviously, if the share price goes up, your yield on cost um, looks a little better as they raise the dividend. So that's kind of my focus there. I like IBM still at these levels. I hope you have a great day.